Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, boy, this video is a roller coaster because I started off with the stencil here. This is the Picket Fence Studios Layered Flit Butterfly Stencil. And there is also a coordinating die. Now I actually bought both of these for once. This is <laughs> something that I don't do that often. But I was just really ready to have a play with these. The thing I liked is that the stencil fits exactly the size of the die. So that makes life easier. It doesn't leave a border which I was happy with. So this is what it cuts out obviously from a piece of paper. You can see the die fits exactly inside of the stencil. The stencil has the large butterfly but it also has the uh, detail that you can add. So I start off this video by thinking I'm just going to show you a technique or two. Well we're going to show about 10 ideas to do with all of the butterflies. Now I'm starting off with some lunar paste. If you have watched my videos recently you will know that I recently talked myself into buying a few more colors and boy have I been enjoying them. So this is Minty Fresh and Midnight Snack. Now I put the Midnight Snack down the center. I'm using two different fingers here. I know somebody pointed out in one of my previous videos that if you introduce your fingers, you're introducing bacteria and things. Uh, I've been doing this with my uh, gold one, my Slippery When Wet, for maybe the last six months to a year, whenever I got that one, and I've never had a problem. So I'm just sort of using them how I enjoy using them, but be aware that perhaps that can happen. But that's a personal choice, I guess. Now we are moving past to this video because with the Lunar Paste, I'm going to add a little bit of water in with this, and this loosens it up to be more like a sort of metallic-y, shiny paint, I guess. So you just work it, I'm just working it with a paintbrush. I end up knowing that I'm going to need a little bit more than this. I put some water down. I am working on a waffle flower stencil mat. Now this is the mini version, and I have been loving this recently because everything is cleaning off it. It does make for a tidy clean up it grips the paper it's going well so far so good um, now I am just using a paintbrush I probably should have gotten out a bigger one but you know that's okay I'm using a scrap piece of paper this doesn't need to be utterly perfect because I'm going to put some splashes on it but I'm just keeping my paintbrush going in all of the same direction add some splatters I didn't like the splatters that I got so I'm actually going to try and dab them up that didn't work so I just start again it's okay I'm gonna do the splatters all over again and then this will be used in a card later on just while I had the colors out because at this point I was like this is all I'm doing I'm just creating the card and I'm enjoying myself well boy did I go down a rabbit hole so now I'm starting off and I'm going to do a similar technique with a little bit more lunar paste Except for these are going to um, blend really nicely and create an orange in the middle. So I kind of use two different fingers. I start off with the darker color in the middle, spread it out a little bit, and then I add the other color without blending too much. Then I come in and blend them together and add anything else you need to. This is an endless process. I could keep going. Sometimes it's better to just stop, stop mucking with it, take it away, let it dry, and you can always come back to it and adjust on top if you need to later on. But you can see I was just having a ball. I was going to town. These look absolutely stunning. I ended up just cutting a whole pile of butterflies out, and I was like, right, I'm just going to have a whole lot of fun because this is really fun. Um, here I'm just going to add a little bit more pink over a little spot of yellow that I got. Now do bear in mind that all of these techniques today are going to work with any butterfly dye that you have. If you have a dye then you can also cut it out of some vellum or out of some acetate or out of even a piece of cardstock and create the stencil too. So you definitely don't have to buy this and that's the point of this video is that this just gives you, if you have a butterfly which is just pretty common, uh, then you've got all these options. So now we are going to start some ink blending. Now this is Uncharted Mariner, the color. I'm using Distress Oxides. And even at this point, I lifted this up and thought, oh, I really like that butterfly. Imagine that on a dark and busy background with the gorgeous white wings, but I'm going to keep going. And then I actually end up with this blend that I absolutely love. It becomes such a seamless blend. Now it is just my preference to use finger dobbers. I've definitely moved towards these uh, in the last couple of years instead of using like domed foam blenders. I use those when I do have a really big space, like when I need to cover an entire background. Um, but if I can get away with using finger dobbers, these are definitely what work for me. And so I am just going to create this little blend on both of these wings. These look absolutely stunning. And remember, this is just the first layer. 
We can also either leave them as is. You could draw in the details with a white gel pen or a gold gel pen or something like that it would look stunning. Or you could trace the gold pen um, through the stencil if you have this stencil that comes with the set. I mean, the options are just endless, but look at this blend. This is absolutely stunning. Now, most of you will know that I also have uh, two gorgeous children and I have one of them on my knee as we speak doing this. And this was the point where he couldn't help it anymore. It was his turn. <laughs> so he's reaching for his butterfly and mum's turn was over. So I had got out the colors that I wanted to use and I thought I was going to get to do it, but nope, this was not to be. So this is his turn and that's okay. I'm going to help him do his one. But he absolutely, both of my children love crafting. They loved getting involved in the projects. Often when I am crafting or creating here, then they will be beside me doing their own version of exactly what I am doing. Um, sometimes they want to be shown. Sometimes they want their projects on camera. Sometimes they're okay with not being on camera. Sometimes they're just happy in their own little business. And I don't want to disrupt them with having them show the camera or anything like that. But the, at this point, my son was absolutely loving it. Something that they can't really get used to is that we have a camera uh, directly above our heads which means we can't lean over our work and so he sometimes struggles you'll see his head pop in lots and lots and lots because they like to get close to their projects so I'm just holding his um butterfly in place and actually when I was editing this I was really realizing that what he was doing was he was creating a background here he thought he's creating the background rather than coloring in the die cut so you can see he wants to shift it back into place every single time it moves or he moves it and he shifts it back so that it fits that sort of white space which I just really realized interesting though to see how he perceived uh, what we were doing whereas I thought we were coloring the butterflies whereas he was kind of creating a background so both is good now I have left his little project in, I have sped it up for uh, about 10 times, so skip the next 10 to 12 seconds if you don't want to see his little project, and then we will carry on with all of ours, but as you can see, he is definitely trying to line this up, and probably if I had realized that at the time, I could have added some tape or something to help him secure it, but that's okay. Then he moves into all the all sorts of yellows and oranges, and he was just very, very happy. He was actually singing really loudly when he was doing this, and I asked him if I could keep that bit in, but he said, no, you just keep my art. In, so that's okay uh, we're just going with that right moving on back to the butterflies now I'm going to use this inner stencil part now you can tell this is actually the next day because I have my nails done for an event that I went to that night um, and what I was laughing at is that yeah, once my son started crafting that was game over for mine which is absolutely fine so we are coming back I'm lining up this this is the detailed part I guess um, super easy to line up this is actually transparent uh, texture paste, so this is going to dry completely clear. I'm just giving it that extra little bit of shine, that extra little bit of detail, without taking away from that gorgeous blend. So I'm really just having a play with lots and lots of these butterflies. You, I doesn't matter how they end up. It doesn't matter if I accidentally do something I don't like. Uh, I was just really enjoying it. Now I'm going to use the same transparent texture paste here, except for I'm going to use the stencil, and this obviously is going to give me the texture and a little bit of height on top of this lunar paste, but then instead of just leaving it plain as is, I'm actually going to add over some glitter, some diamond white glitter. Again, I'm just playing, having lots and lots of fun with lots of different uh, elements to adding different things back together but I know this is going pretty fast this whole video is going pretty fast because I have a lot to show you and this ends up being a super long video so if you end up sticking with me for this whole video leave me a comment and let me know your absolute favorite out of all of them that I'm going to share today because boy do we cover some techniques and all of these are things that you probably have almost at home now this is an old one this is glass bead glitter gel now this I don't even think this is being made anymore however really simple to make it yourself there is just teeny teeny tiny micro beads in here there is glitter in here and it's pretty much a sort of clear transparent gel that holds it all and suspends them so you could make your own version of this one absolutely but I have it and I may as well use it up I don't use this that often uh, it definitely creates some nice texture so I thought that I would give this a go again I don't want to deter or take away completely from the backgrounds that we've created already 
but I like the idea of adding on some of the detail. Then this looks pretty cool. As I said, it's going to dry differently because it's going to dry uh, a little bit more transparent and clear. And then that way you end up seeing the glitter and the beads kind of at the end. But nice, even just using some white um, through there would look gorgeous too. Now, moving on to a completely different technique. This one is a little bit addictive, I'm not going to lie, and it is super duper simple. I have just picked out some washi tapes, and who does not love using up their washi tape collection? So I am going to pop down just very, very randomly. Now, the trick here is just to not think. Just put them down, lay them on top of each other. I have gone for sort of bluesy greensies with a little bit of gold. I'm also going to add in some numbers. I'm going to add in some text. And I'm obviously just going for a shape around about the size of my butterfly die because we are going to cut these out in a minute. As I said, the key here is to not think. And lots of these are a little bit transparent, so you end up, even though you're layering them, you see things uh, through them, and you sort of see all of the layers come together. Don't think about it, just pop them down and see what you get. Make sure all of the edges are down nice and flat. Check that your shape is going to fit if you need to make any adjustments, or if you want a little bit of some color sort of in a different place, then you can kind of add it now. I just wanted a little bit of a number or a little bit of black text or something in the middle there, so I just got a quick little rip and popped it in the middle. And then we are good to go. I'm going to die cut this out. This is going to die cut beautifully still. I didn't have any problems with it, um, but I guess that depends on how thick your cardstock is to begin with. You may need to run this through a couple of times. You might need a shim. I didn't have to do anything for this one, which was good. So you can see I just check where everything kind of goes and make sure I've got all the colors where I want them to be. My piece of paper was a bit big and I'm going to do another one. This is what my daughter, she had picked out these um, from my stash. As I said, this is the next day from previously. Um, she was doing this combination and for whatever reason, I definitely lean towards blues and greens. Those are sort of my colors. The pinks, the purples, and the oranges and everything are, I don't. And so this one, she was, this is her exact combination. So I thought that I would give this one a go. I'm going to add the numbers on top, and I'm also going to add the text again. I think this just breaks up uh, all of those colors a little bit. The text in particular is pretty transparent, so you can see through it quite well um, in all of the colors. Then I have die cut them, run them through the machine, and then even the little antennae here, this one got a little bit stuck, but the other one was perfectly fine and just popped out. So they die cut beautifully. Again, this is just kind of a background that you create and you can go anywhere from here. I am going to show you some tricks at the end. Even if you just create these background uh, sort of butterflies, then I'll show you what you can use these for as well if you don't want them to be the absolute main focal point. So, right, moving on to the next one, I'm going to use some sprays. This is just regular cardstock that I cut the butterflies out of. It is not watercolor. Um, now, the sprays obviously put out a lot of ink. That purple is very, very dark, so I am going to mop a little bit of it up so it just doesn't take over all of the color, add a little bit more pink back in, and then what I needed the pink for was to break it up because I want to add some yellow. But if I'd added yellow and purple, that's going to make mud together. So I just want this to be on the very outskirts of the wings. Now, of course, you can use any media that you have in your stash to create these butterflies, to create any of them, or to create new ones. I could have gone on, I could have doubled this list. I was honestly off on a roll, and I just wanted to keep going and going and going. But I did stop here, and I know the video ended up long but heaps of fun. So that took me 30 seconds, maybe a minute to create this gorgeous butterfly, and I had heaps of fun. Now we're moving on to the next one already. This is the Tidal Wave Laser Cut Elements from 49 and Market. Now I am, again, this is blues and greens, this is me. These are all florals and um, butterflies and that kind of thing, but I'm going to take some of these and create a floating image. Uh, upon my butterfly. Now there's also two ways to do this and I will share a couple of different methods that you can do, but in general, I'm just going to take some of these elements. Now you could have pre-made, uh, pre-cut elements, you could make them yourself, you could, anything is going to work. So just because I'm using these today, it doesn't mean that you have to. These are stunning. I love these laser cut elements because they have no white border. So when you pop these out and they pop out beautifully, 
they're just like a cardstock. They're almost about the same weight, I would say, as, you know, somewhere around a hundred-ish pound. Um, they feel about that thick to me. I don't know that. I didn't read the packaging, but I'm just guessing. They're sort of relatively sturdy, and I just picked out a few flowers, some pansies of a few different colors, and then I'm just going to organize these on top of my butterfly. I'm not gluing them or anything like that. I'm just placing them, and I'm trying to place them so that some of the edges uh, will die cut, if you know what I mean, because this is going to become uh, floating images. I'm going to pop up all of these and die cut them cleanly with the die. So I'm really just trying to make sure that I've got a nice spread of colors, a little bit of a triangle. If I have two greens there, I want one down the bottom. It doesn't work out perfectly, but I'm just trying to make sure that they're spaced out a little bit. I have the darker blues, lighter blues, um, and yeah, you just do your best, pop them all on top. Now, there's a couple of different things that you can use here. One is press and seal, which I will use today. Literally, this was sitting beside me, but you can just use some low-tech tape. For example, the four-inch wide mint tape. That's what I've used previously. That works perfectly too, because I'm actually going to die cut this press and seal. Now, all I do is line up my butterfly roughly from uh, the shape underneath, the die cut that I already have sitting underneath. Peel away the die cut from there because we don't need that again. Run this through my die cutting machine just as is. And my plates are pretty cut out, but they still work perfectly fine. And I'm left with the press and seal die cut, which has all of my gorgeous um, cutouts on it. Now I'm going to take the back of these. I'm going to add some little foam uh, squares. This is just what I have. I'm using it up. You can use foam squares, foam dots. You can cut up foam tape. Anything is going to work. Now, the press and seal kind of leaves this a little bit flimsy, I guess you would call it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm put uh, foam dots all over the back, but I'm only taking the backing off the foam dots from that right hand side. So I hold the left hand side where it's sort of in place, and then I get the right hand side lined up, and that is all exposed. Then once that is lined up, I know that the other side will line up nicely. So I take off all the backing from this side and then pop this one down. And then that way, everything is all nicely lined up and I sort of haven't got too much stickiness going on at once. Then once you have all of those pressed down, give them a nice little press, make sure that they are all adhered perfectly in spot, in place. Then you're able to gently peel back your press and seal and you have these gorgeous floating images on top of your butterfly. And the best part is, is that it follows the exact butterfly cutout. So that's another fun technique that we can use today. Right, moving on to the next ones. As I said, I know that we're moving quickly through all of these, but I have lots to show you. So for the next one coming up, we are going to go back to using ink and we are going to kind of double stencil, well stencil. So all I'm going to do first is take one color. This happens to be picked raspberry. Then I'm going to do a sort of undercoat. I guess I'm going to do a light base layer. So I'm just, I am using more ink, but I'm just sort of making sure that I don't go too heavy handed. I'm using a finger dobber and I'm sort of, every time I dip into the fresh ink, I just dip to the side a little bit first to make sure I don't get a big splodge. So I just do a really first, a light first uh, layer. And then you can take any stencils that you have. I chose not to go with the butterfly one. I just want a completely random stencil. And I'm going to use a rose one. It's sort of a rose pattern with lots of swirls and things like that. And I'm just going to place it over the top. I'm actually going to move the stencil as well because I want two of those roses on there. And there's only one in the pattern. So I sort of half do it and then I'm going to change it around. But any stencil you have, any decoration, you can put on top. And that way we sort of have a stenciled gorgeous butterfly. So I'm not using any of the detail for this one. But I still think this one looks stunning. Of course, you could add different colors on top. I'm adding the same color. I'm just adding more ink, a heavier layer of the ink, and that way it appears much darker. So don't have to have multiple inks for that one. Just the same one is going to do the trick. And I think that looks pretty stunning too. Right, so here are some of the butterflies that we have created. This was so much fun. As I said, I could have kept going. There were heaps and heaps of techniques. I know I've barely scratched the surface, but I really wanted to sort of... Um, 
you know, use lots of different media. So we use pre-made die cuts, we've used washi tape, we've used texture paste, we've used ink. I just wanted to, yeah, use up several different things and hoping that you have something of these at home that inspires you a little bit more. So this one here is super subtle. You can see that that ink, uh, sorry, the paste dried really clear um, and it just gives it that extra detail when you move it around in the light. Now we are going to make a card today. So I am going to get to it, I promise. The one thing that I did want to show you as well, when you create these butterflies, layering these up also gives a stunning effect. So even this blue one here behind the die cuts, and if you cut these up and you sort of add a little bit for the bottom of the wings, the top of the wings, or the side, you can choose which direction you go and see here the left hand side looks gorgeous. Layering these up is a stunning option too, and I'm going to do that today as well. I'm actually going to go with the um, butterfly that we created with the roses, the stencils. Now, this is what we made at the very beginning, remember, back at the start, and I'm going to use an embossing folder to give this a bit of texture. This is a stunning embossing folder. It's sort of busy, but the, it is a very, very 3D. It gives this stunning pillow effect. This embossing folder is called Organic Petals, and I've actually done a really cool video before where I uh, embossed a piece of paper and then you cut out one of the images and it becomes a stencil and you can do all different stenciling with all different colors uh, on this one. It's a little bit difficult to explain, but it looks stunning. I love this embossing folder. And here you can just see the gorgeous texture, the shine from the lunar paste, all good things. Now I am going to keep this super, super simple, but I have some double-sided uh, adhesive sheets here. Now I did add a little bit of that minty fresh lunar paste, so exactly the same color as what I added onto the background. Also so the same that I use with the splatters and I just did a solid little sort of strip of it down this side and then on the other side I also have another solid patch this was not quite dry so I actually caught this on my desk that's why that little white dot is there but that's okay I'm just carrying on and then I popped I'm going to make some of this into strips some really really thin gorgeous strips and that is just going to line our back panel there as well then the other little bit that I have is for my sentiment, that other little rectangle that we did. I put double-sided tape on the back of both of these just for uh, to make life easy. Now the sentiment, the happy birthday sentiment I have here, this is from the Word Fragments stamp set. This is a woodwear stamp set. It is a great price, lots, a good range of sentiments. And I love that it creates this little border. It's already done for me. Then I'm going to stick this down onto the um, minty fresh background cut around it and that way I'm just making sure everything is kind of tied together because we've already got quite a lot of colors introduced in this uh, card here and I don't want to introduce any more so I'm just trying to stick with what I have already then on the back here this is how I use up my scraps when I notice something that is getting a little bit more than what I would prefer I can see all my little bits here from the double side adhesive are piling up so I'm going to make an effort to make sure I use as many of these on the back here which I need um some adhesive on. So this is where I hide all of those scraps. Now all of those edges there, I just use them up and then I just leave the nice sort of square or rectangular ones for a different project, but no one will see this and that's a-okay. So there's the secret between you and I, you know what's behind there. Once I have that, I mean, and you also could absolutely use just liquid glue to pop this on. I do like double-sided tape for this because the embossing does mean that, um, the double-sided tape is going to grab really well. Whereas sometimes I think with the liquid glue, I think it probably doesn't, there's not as much contact, but that's just in my head, I'm not sure. Then I use some 9.5 inch Tim Holtz scissors, some big long ones to trim down the sides. That gets everything nice and equal and even. I use those tiny little strips that we created. These are very, very thin. This is the reason that I like putting the double-sided adhesive on the back of these and it means I don't have to worry about using some liquid glue or anything like that. It just takes away, but you could, you absolutely could, or you could make them a little bit thicker and that would make it easier too. Right, now I'm going to put together the butterflies. As I said, I'm going to layer these up. I know it's a little bit of a shame to cut up this rose butterfly, but I had all of these and I may as well use them up. It's better than them just sitting in my stash and not doing anything with them and me forgetting about them. So I'm going 
going to cut the four wings of this one up separately. Then I'm going to add again some of those leftover double-sided adhesive pieces. You could use liquid glue here, but double-sided adhesive means that it just sticks in place and it's good to go. I add four little pieces on the back there, one on each, and I'm going to get every one of his wings separate and just sort of pop these ones out kind of to the bottom left, I guess, bottom right and bottom left. Um, they sort of aren't at the very bottom and they aren't at the very top, they're sort of out to the side. And then I do the same on this one, and then I am going to actually do above. So I'm going to put the top ones sort of up above. And I do need to cut this because obviously otherwise it would be the same size. So if you cut them, then it means you can adjust exactly where you want them to pop out of. And I just think this gives an extra little layer of dimension. If you want to go even further than this, then you could cut out some of the butterflies in like some of the vellum. Uh, you could also emboss them to give them more dimension and that would help the wings stick up and you could add those behind the butterflies too. I think that would look stunning. I have chosen to just use a little bit of foam tape here and that's going to pop up the wings and then I have some uh, double-sided tape in the middle where the body is and that's going to keep that bit down nice and flat. Then I have my gorgeous little birthday sentiment. I was struggling as to where I should put this because I thought all of the places looked pretty fine. I could have put this down the bottom, the top, to the side. I wasn't sure. So at this point, it really is your choice. I am going to add a tiny little bit of foam tape on one side because um, even though I have double-sided tape on the back of there, I do need to keep this nice and even with the butterfly. And the wings are already popped up on some foam tape, so I want to keep things nice and even. So I pop some foam tape on the back there and that just makes sure everything is at the same level. So we are coming to the end of the video finally. If you've made it this far, I'm super impressed and I appreciate that you are still here. Thank you so much for joining me. As usual, I will try and link as many of the products that I've used today. I will try not to forget any, and you can find those links down below. I will also link to the Buy Me A Coffee in case you would like to support my page. That helps me produce my videos and get everything sorted. I appreciate all of the support. Thank you so much for the coffees that people have been buying me. I appreciate it so much. I can't even begin to say how much, so thank you. But other than that, thank you again for being here, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.